I'm going to start this video with a little bit of a curveball by saying that self abandonment is not inherently bad because self abandonment is ultimately a protective mechanism to protect us from feeling some sort of pain. It is ultimately a protective mechanism to keep us feeling included with our friends and with our family, with our tribe in general. And ultimately, it is a protective mechanism for the sake of our own survival. And what I mean by survival, because that one could really uh, pack a lot of punch to it, is that as humans, we have this innate need to be part of the social group, the social tribe, because it is within that tribe where we survive. It is within that tribe that we have support, protection, safety. And so it's an innate human thing to want to be fitting in as part of the tribe. Now, what is self-abandonment within itself? Self-abandonment could be totally changing who we are, aka disconnecting who from who we authentically are and becoming somebody else so that our family accepts us. Self-abandonment can be disconnecting from who we authentically are so that our friends or our school system accepts us. Self-abandonment could be disconnecting from our bodies and living in our head or living kind of distracted, numb, dissociated to avoid feeling some type of pain, whether it be emotional or some type of physical pain that we experienced when we were children or some other part of time throughout our lives, maybe even trauma related, right? Uh, as a matter of fact, all of these are trauma related in the grand scheme of what trauma truly is. So self-abandonment is not inherently bad, right? It's a protective mechanism. But if you're watching this video, chances are you're recognizing, well, those old protective patterns, right? They're not really helping me anymore. I don't want to be somebody else to fit in. I don't want to numb out and to move through life. I want to be who I am. I want to be authentic. I want to know what I like, what I dislike, be able to express myself the way that I like, the way that feels good to me. And maybe that self-abandonment is keeping you just a little bit disconnected from that because self-abandonment is ultimately disconnection from who we truly are, from being right here within our bodies and our authenticity, right? And it's within our authenticity, within our bodies and connection to ourselves that we get to know what we do like and what we don't like. It's within our bodies and connection to ourselves that we know what we do want and what we don't want, what we do need and what we don't need. And it's here where we get to feel life, get to feel direction, feel that ability to be decisive and know what we want, and ultimately get to choose where we go with life, what we do, how we respond to life. And that's where the fulfillment is. That's where the magic of life really gets to be. And so although self-abandonment is not inherently bad, it may not be serving the once beneficial purpose that it did so back when. And that's important to recognize. And so the one piece that I have to share here is that recognizing that self-abandonment is not inherently bad and it was actually born to protect us is instead of ostracizing these old patterns of numbing out, instead of ostracizing these patterns of becoming a different person to fit in, right? We're rejecting a part of ourselves when we do that. Instead, recognizing, oh, 
actually this was born to help me in some sort of way. This pattern, although it's not helping me right now, it was born to help me in some type of way. And so instead of ostracizing it, let me change my relationship to it. Let me recognize it for what it is and recognize that it was helping me and slowly but surely as we change our relationship to it, we as our authentic selves start to come up to the plate and the self-abandonment starts to come a little bit down, right? And so the playing field starts to balance out and we get to show up as who we truly are that much more. There's uh, a lot of mm, magic in acceptance. Um, Furthermore, there's a lot of magic in being able to have the self-love, even for the parts of us that have been destructive or have been very difficult to experience. Um, Because it's when we can ultimately have conversation with that part of ourselves, love that part of ourselves, that it comes out of the dark and into the light. And when it comes into the light, we get to operate together and move through this life in a whole new way. And so maybe right there and then, you get to give that part of yourself a new role. Hey, instead of protecting me from everything, maybe you can just protect me from the actual bad actors that might be in my life, right? The bad people who don't really have a positive intention for our relationship and go from there. And that provides a whole new way of interacting with this part of yourself that has a lot of influence on how you feel and how you behave. And so to give you food for thought somewhere to actually take what we're talking about within this video, within this conversation, is two questions that I have for you just to close things out. The first question that I have is number one, where do you feel self-abandonment is currently showing up in your life? I'm going to repeat that just just so we really digest it so it really lands. Where do you feel self abandonment is currently showing up in your life? You might think about certain patterns within certain relationships or certain patterns within certain environments. I know for myself, I have a lot of trouble with um, abandoning myself within my intimate relationships, right? It's difficult for me to speak my needs. Instead, I just people please. I totally abandon what I need. Um, Sometimes around things like finances, right? I get so overwhelmed sometimes, I just numb out, distract myself, I overthink, totally leave my body, right? That creates an essence of awareness for us to, to start with. And then my second question is, what might your life look like in deeper connection to yourself, your authentic self. I'll ask that again. What might your life look like in deeper connection to your authentic self? I can tell you for me, in my relationship with um, just intimate relationships, but also within Uh, my relationship with my previous girlfriend, it was me being able to actually speak what my needs were. It was me being able to speak what my actual boundaries were, even if I was trembling in my words. We get better at it with practice. Um, Another example is being in connection with myself. Let's take the same example of money. When I start to feel those things creep up and, you know, the conversations around money uh, and I feel that sense of overwhelm, instead of totally just like taking that elevator up into my head from my body 
and cutting off that ability to feel and instead just overthinking, I regulate myself with the practices that we talk about on the channel. And then I allow myself to feel what's present within these situations or with these conversations around money. And then I choose how I want to respond to those things in a powerful showing up way, right? And because of that, life opens up. Life opens up as a result of that. I feel way more fulfilled within my relationships. I feel way more fulfilled within my ability to navigate money. And I just show up more as who I really am. And so you don't have to answer these questions right now, but perhaps just creating a nice space for yourself to journal on these questions, maybe go for a walk and just kind of talk to yourself about these questions. And they could start to provide a pathway back home to who you are. They could start to provide a pathway to expressing your authenticity just more frequently and with more ease because the path to mastery is paved with practice. And that's all I got for you today. And I'd be remiss not to share that if this video brought up many questions for you, please hit me in the comments down below. Um, your questions may also help other people um, and if you'd like to keep it private, that's totally okay too. Just feel free to message me on Instagram. We can have a conversation there. Or better yet, if you want to take the route of having like a private one-on-one -on -one conversation, um, I, you can also find me through my website. With that said, I will leave you here and I invite you, let that authenticity fly after this video. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Much, much love.